Well, good morning, church. Welcome. Hey, we are glad you are here this morning. I hope you've got all your stuff ready, your pillow, your Bible, your coffee, everything set to take in church this morning. We're really glad that you're here. If you are a first time person joining us today, I'm so glad you found us. I'm so glad you're here. I hope that this is inspiring to you and I hope you learn a lot about who Jesus is as we take in this service. I would like to just ask you to do one thing. Uh, if you would head over to uh, livingproof.co slash next steps. I'd invite you to fill the form out there. We would love to get to know you. We've got a little gift for you that we'd like to send to you. And I'm just grateful you're here. Thanks for joining us today. There are you know, a few ways that we stream our services each week. We do that on YouTube. It's a great platform we stream there. We stream at our website, livingproof.co, and you click watch live. It's really the most stable place to watch our service. And then finally, we stream at Facebook. And, and at Facebook, can you do two things for me? One, would you like this? Would you just like it? I mean, it just does something and it helps us get a, a better reach. And then the second thing is this, I wanna encourage you to share this live stream with those people that you are friends with. Maybe somebody will find Christ today. Maybe somebody will find Jesus just because you shared uh, this stream. I'd love for you to do that today. Um, you know, we are, we're preparing our hearts for worship this morning and uh, our, our staff misses you. We miss you. We miss shaking your hands and seeing you on Sundays and we miss hearing what the Lord is doing in your life just face to face. But we've worked really hard to connect with you. It's really cool to watch our staff reaching out to you and, and praying for you, texting you. Uh, hearing a little bit of uh, what the Lord is teaching you through this time. So can I encourage you to do that with people as well? I encourage you to share what the Lord is doing in your life. Um, thanks for being here. We're going we're gonna to spend some time in worship. We, uh, we, we, we desire to be the kind of people that are uh, lifting Jesus' name up and surrendering all that we have to Him. And so as our worship team leads us this morning, I encourage you to sing. I encourage you to listen to the words. I, I encourage you to embrace this moment in a way uh, that the Lord's challenging us to do in this season. So, hey, let's get ready. We're going to lift the name of Jesus up right now. Thanks for being here this morning.
What a great time of worship. What a great song of the faith. Great is thy faithfulness. That is a song uh, that is so true. And I know many of you have experienced the faithful hand of God in, in your life. And we see it in God's word as, as he's been faithful in the past. I firmly believe he will be faithful in the future. And what we just did right there together, church, is something we call worship. And it's just part of what worship looks like, but it's a core value of ours. Worship means all of me for all of him. And it is our worship. And it's, 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 we celebrate the greatness of God and we surrender all that we are to him. So thank you for joining us in that moment uh, this morning in our service. A lot of you ask, hey, what is my next step? Um, and when we say next steps, Basically what we're saying is, what is it that I need to do next in my walk with Jesus? Now some of you have accepted and professed faith in Jesus and your next step's baptism. Some of you need to grow deeper in your understanding of scripture. Some of you need to connect to a group. Those are all part of next steps. Go over to livingproof.co slash next steps, fill the form out and we have people that will come alongside you and walk with you in those next steps. If you're, if, you're, if you're watching for the first time, again, we're so glad you're here. I, I want to encourage you to also go to livingproof.co slash next steps. Let us know you were here. We'd love to get to know you. We'll bring you a gift and, and just to say thank you for being here with us this morning. Another one of our core values is generosity. Your generosity has been overwhelming these past four weeks. It is amazing to watch what the Lord is doing through you to reach a community. Our food pantry is meeting a massive need it's because of you that it is meeting that need so thank you I just want to say thank you for being generous and being the type of people that care for others we want to go into a time of giving right now and on your screen there's going to be three ways that you can give and those three ways are you can go to our website livingproof.co slash give and and go there and give you can text to give on your phone and finally you can mail in your, uh, your giving this morning. But let's pray that the Lord would bless this right now. God, we come before you right now and Lord, we are uh, we're overwhelmed by your faithfulness to us. We are overwhelmed by the love you have for us. We are overwhelmed by the things um, that you're teaching us right now as, as pause in our life. And Lord, I pray that as we come before you now, that you would use these funds God, that you would change a city, you would change a community, that you would change people, that you would allow us the, uh, the beauty of meeting a need. Lord, we, we say it all of the time that we want to use these funds to bless the community and we're going to give away everything you've given us. So this morning, God, I pray that you would, you would take these funds and you would minister to people through them. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this day. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. Hey, we're getting ready to go in to the Word of God, and Pastor Chad is coming this morning to share uh, the Word of God this morning. And I want to in invite you that if, if you're you're watching on your on your phone or, or maybe your computer, um, you you can follow along with the notes there, and they're all through U version is the app that we use. But you can uh, click on the link there for notes, and all of those sermon notes and scripture will pull up. So. Hey, pull that up and get ready to take some notes, and let's hear from the Word of God this morning from Pastor Chad. Let's do that now. Well, good morning, Abundant Life. My name is Chad Glover. I have the privilege of serving as the teaching pastor here, and last week, Pastor Phil kicked off this series called Light in the Night, and we are looking at God's Word to be able to navigate some dark times that we found ourselves in, Right? If you have a copy of God's Word, won't you find the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, and I'm going to give you some time to find that little book in the Old Testament. And while you're finding that, I just want to share with you a little bit about my, my personal family and our story. We have three kids, and, and what's happened along that process is that I've been, I've been able to have this front row experience on seeing like, like pregnancy and kids come into the world. It's amazing, right? And, and so let me just break down how that happens. You have a brown chicken and a brown cow, then there's a baby. Some of y'all will get that, some of you won't. And then there begins this process called pregnancy. And pregnancy is one of these processes, uh, so I'm told, that is, that is very beautiful but also quite painful. And here, here's a picture of my wife and our, our second child. Here she is just pregnant and looking beautiful. This a few years ago. And, and, and everything right here just seems good, right? 
We're in a garden. She's expecting new life. Cute little baby bump. But what's behind this photo, let me just inform you what's going on. She has this child laid up on her sciatic nerve, right? And so she is literally limping along through life. And it's about this time in her pregnancy when she's just like, man, when is this going to be over? And I start there this morning because I think that a lot of us are asking that question right now, right? And maybe not about pregnancy, but we are all in this season of waiting. And we're asking this question, when is this going to be over? And just like my wife, there's a little bit of discomfort going on, and, and I think the novelty of getting to work from home and getting to do Zoom calls and, and getting to do church at home, I think it's starting to wear off a little bit. And we're all asking as a world, when is the world going to reopen? And we found ourselves this morning in this, in this season of waiting. And maybe you are, are unaware of what's going on, but a few weeks ago, we got this news that there's a pandemic happening, all right? We got this bad news that caused us to enter in this season of waiting, but there's good news on the horizon because the president just, just came out this week and he's saying that the, the world is going to begin to reopen, but we are still right in the middle of this season called waiting. And we don't like this, do we? Like some of y'all right now, you're in your, you're in your PJs, uh, you have a Jimmy Dean sausage biscuit being cooked in the microwave, and you are pacing frantically in front of that microwave, right? Like, we, as a, we are not good at this waiting game. And, and we, we come in here this morning, and we're watching this video, and, and we're asking God, what are you doing in the midst of the waiting? Like, like last week, I don't know if you, you realize this, but last week we, we gathered as a body of Christ in all of these different homes, and, and we turned our attention to, to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And there was this moment, if you watched our services last week, if you didn't, you, you should go watch this. There was this moment where, where our creative team, they put together this song, and, and I don't know about you, but, but seeing all of the faces around the perimeter of these people, of our church people singing, all of these, like it just inside of me, I was just like, oh, I can't wait to get back and worship with thousands of people in the energy that happens in that space. But we find ourselves having hope on the horizon, but still in the midst of the waiting. So we're in this waiting game, knowing that it won't last forever, growing weary and being a little bit fatigued, but waiting. And some of us, when it comes to waiting, we're not just waiting on the world that we reopen. Like, we're waiting on some other things too, right? Like, if you're being honest, some of us that are watching right now, you're, you're not just waiting on the economy. Like, you're waiting on a job. Or some of you, you're, you're waiting on a pregnancy. Some of you are waiting on an answer, like a, a cure. I wonder, what are you waiting on right now? We've come into the Word of God, and it's allowing us to see that, that God has something to say in the midst of our waiting. Like the good news about all of the bad news that's going on is that this is not new news, and that men and women of God, they have been through, uh, they've been through seasons, just like the season that we're going through, difficult seasons, and they've held on to this thing that God has preserved throughout the history and he wants to give you this thing so that you will have fuel to not grow weary in the midst of the waiting. God has this, this thing that is all throughout the pages of the scripture that he gives to the people of God so that they can live by faith. And the thing that God wants to give you in the midst of your waiting is his promises. And the nature of a promise is that it involves waiting. I've titled this message, if you're taking notes, wait for it. Wait for it. And here's what I want you to see this morning, that you're going to have to let some things out. But then you need to listen up, jot some things down, and then I want to call you to wait for the promises of God. So we're in the series, Light in the Night, because we are in this dark time. And again, God's people, they have navigated these things in the past. And one of the people that, have, that has gone through a difficult time that we have recorded on the pages of Scripture is this man named Habakkuk. Now, Habakkuk, he's a prophet in the Old Testament, but he's a prophet in reverse, is what I like to say, that most prophets, they speak to the people on behalf of God, but Habakkuk is speaking to God on behalf of the people. And Habakkuk, man, he just gets a little bit raw, y'all. Like, you, re you jump into the pages of Habakkuk chapter 1, and he is just complaining to God. He's basically saying, God, I'm just wondering, God, 
What are you doing in the midst of all of this? And I think that it is so appropriate that we look at the prophet Habakkuk and we draw strength and direction during this time. In, in, in a Habakkuk 1.5, God answers Habakkuk and he's like, Habakkuk, I'm doing some wonderful things that you can't even fathom. And Habakkuk's like, that's right. See, I just need to complain to you and then you would come through and you would do some new things. And then God goes on to tell Habakkuk, it's going to get worse. Like sometimes God answers our prayers in ways that we didn't want him to. And so Habakkuk, he hears this word from God that it's going to get worse before it gets better. That, that God is raising up these Babylonians, these evil people, to oppress God's people because they have wandered away from God. And so Habakkuk, he continues his complaint to God. In Habakkuk 1.17, he says this. Shall they therefore empty their net and continue to slay the nations without pity? And this is just kind of a conclusive statement where Habakkuk saying, God, what's going on? And he's getting some things off of his chest. Point number one, if you're taking notes, you could write this down. You need to let it out. Let it out. I wonder, have you ever had that moment or, or that season where you got bad news? You know, prom was canceled. Graduation looked differently this year. Uh, they, they died. The world was shut down. I've had some of those seasons in my life. A couple of years ago, the news was from my mom, and she said, hey, I have breast cancer. My, my wife, when she was a teenager, she woke up her junior year of high school with a migraine, and it didn't go away for three years. I buried friends prematurely. One of my best friends, he, we, we always dreamed in college about raising families together, and he suffered in his 20s not having any children because he's sterile. And what we do in those times when we get bad news is, is what, here's what we want to do. We want to run to a Jesus that's just going to alleviate all the pain, right? And so last week, Pastor Phil, he talked about this bobblehead Jesus. And we want to run to this plastic Jesus that just says yes and just says bless and removes all of our stress, you know. And, and we want him just to hear our, our complaints and hear our cries and our needs and just to say, yes, I will remove that. Almost like he's a genie in a bottle. But listen. Some of the things that have made you the most like Jesus are the very things that you prayed that Jesus would take away from you. And what we find in the scriptures is that God will allow us to go through difficult times. And the real Jesus lived in a real world with real problems and he endured those things at times. We need to quit expecting this life to be heaven. For the believer in Christ, this world is the only hell we will experience. But caution to the one that doesn't have faith in the real Jesus that this life is the only heaven you'll get. And so we find in the scriptures that, that, that it is not aloof to the fact that there are problems in the world. Like this idea that Jesus is, would just take everything away immediately, it, it may be popular, but it's just not biblical. That God is more interested, and, and this, may, this may confuse you a little bit, but God is more interested in your holiness than in your happiness. And he will allow us to go through some things so that he can shape us into his image. And so the scripture, it doesn't try to explain away suffering. It, it actually tells us that Jesus came to enter the suffering, and it gives us language to express ourselves in the suffering. So what Habakkuk is modeling for us is really a good thing. And what he's doing is what the scripture refers to over and over as lamenting. Now, if that's a new word to you, lamenting, just think of this. It's like a song of sorrow. Think country music, all right? And lamenting is where we get some things off of our chest. And what Habakkuk is modeling for us is that you can wonder, God, what are you doing without wandering away from God? And so here's my challenge to you, man. If you're, if you're struggling right now, and there's some things that just don't add up in your mind with the goodness and the character of God, let it out. Like, go to God in prayer. Give him your heart. Complain to God. Don't complain about him. Complain to him. And that's what Habakkuk is doing right now. So Habakkuk laments. He gets these things off of his chest, and he lets them out, and then he goes on in Habakkuk 2, starting in verse 1. He says this, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart. Now, rampart is just like this elevated tower in which you could just get a new perspective over some things. 
And he says, and I will watch to see what he, being God, will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. So Habakkuk, he has positioned himself to listen to God. Point number two, if you're taking notes, you could write this down. Listen up. Listen up. Habakkuk, he let some things out. But now it's time for him to listen up. And sometimes in order for us to hear from God, we got to get some things off of our chest. Maybe you've been around little kids and had little kids. I know this is true with my kids that sometimes they'll get so worked up about something. You know, they'll just be upset and, and I'll be trying to comfort them and calm them down. But they're just crying. You just eat it like this, you know, and they can't hear because they're crying so much. And so I just kind of hold them, let them get it out of their system. And then they're ready to listen to their daddy. And I think that's a great picture of what needs to happen in some of our lives, that we need to let some things out so that we're ready to listen to God. Man, don't you know that God wants to speak to you this morning? Like, think of it. God has shut everything out so that he could bring this word this morning to you in the most intimate place in your life. That's your living room, on your laptop in your kitchen. Some of y'all listen to this right now and, and you just so nappy headed, right? You just, you, you got your PJs on. I mean, church clothes has a new perspective now, doesn't it? And, and listen, God has a word for you this morning. He wants to speak to you. He wants to, he said, hey, are you listening? Check, check, mic check. Are you ready to hear from me now? And we're seeing in God's word that Habakkuk has positioned himself and he's leveraging all that's going on. Because listen, God, he whispers in our pleasures, but he shouts in our pandemics. Are you listening? Have you gotten into the word of God while you've been on this break? Listen, if you follow Jesus, I just implore you to get into the word of God. Jeremiah 15, 16 says this, that your words were found and I ate them. And they became for me a joy and my heart's delight because I'm called by your name, O Lord of hosts. Like, like maybe you need to turn off the news for a little while and get into the good news. We see this all throughout Scripture that Jesus, the perfect Christ, I mean, he's like the MVP of Christianity. He draws strength from the Word of God. Jesus in the wilderness, he's quoting Scripture. Jesus on the cross, he's quoting Scripture that we find our strength from the Word of God. And so open up your Bible app. Get out your Bible and Listen. God has something to say. Some of you are like, well, that, that's a really not my experience, Chad. I mean, I feel like I've been, I've been listening and I've been reading, but I feel like God's really not speaking. And, and sometimes the, the teacher is silent during the test. But listen, the teacher is never absent during the test. Habakkuk, he's listening. Are you listening? He goes on in Habakkuk 2.2, 2, and here's what he says. He says, then the Lord answered me and said... Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Point number three, if you're taking notes, you can write this down. Jot it down. And so Habakkuk, he's let it out. He's, he's listened up. Now it's time to jot it down. And he's teaching us this important thing to do, that you've got to write some things down. Now, we've got to write some things down and record what God is impressing upon us really for two reasons. One, we have an, en we have an enemy, and the other one's we've got a bad memory. And so here's what the enemy's trying to do. The enemy is trying to take this seed, the Word of God, and he's trying to snatch it out of your life like a crow in a cornfield right now this morning. There's some of y'all, y'all got some chaos going on in the household right now. You know, the, the eggs are about to be burnt, the toast is needing to be buttered, and you're trying to do church and all of these things, and, and, and God's trying to speak something in in your life and the enemy is simultaneously trying to distract you from what he's trying to say to you and so some of y'all need to pause right now and maybe you need to go in the chat room and just write down what God's speaking to you hit pause go get something where you can write that down and you can transfer it from the chat room onto your journal or onto your notebook or something like that and we need to write some things down because the enemy is trying to take it away from us jot it down because the enemy, but also because our memory, right? Like we, we know this, right? Like our, our, our memory, um, it's, it's like an 01 cell phone. We can remember like 18 numbers, right? And then that's about it. And there's this propensity for us to forget the promises of God. And we need to write some things down because we need to be able to look back at the faithfulness of God and see that if he was faithful five years ago, he's going to be faithful today. And so the way this looks practically in my life is, 
is I have a journal. So I, I'll get out the, the Bible, the Word of God, and I'm reading through the book of Psalms, and then I'll, I'll pull out this journal. Pastor Phil talked about this last week. Our, our students in, in Fusion Student Ministry, they're doing this. They'll, they'll read the, the Word of God, and they'll, they'll soap. They'll write a scripture, an observation, an application, and a prayer. And, and that's what it looks like functionally. You write some things down that God is imp impressing upon you. You write about the faithfulness of God, that, and, and you tell the stories of God's faithfulness in the past, and it allows you to to have faith in the midst of your, wait, your waiting. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says this, He who calls you is faithful. And one of the greatest enemies of our hope in the midst of the waiting is forgetting God's faithfulness. We need to jot it down, church. And Habakkuk, he's modeling for us to position ourselves in a place where we're ready to listen and then jot some things down. But what's interesting about Habakkuk is that, like, the brother wrote part of the Bible, all right? This is the best-selling book of all time. And Habakkuk, he has a piece of the book. And so he wrote some things down, and what God impressed upon Habakkuk, he said, write these things down in stone. I love this because Habakkuk has written some things in the Word of God, but the Word of God is something that is sure. Like, we have, we have God's book, y'all. Like, God's, God wrote a book. It's inerrant. It's infallible. It's inspired. We have the promises, the impeccable, unblemished promises of God written in stone. Like, what the Word of God says about the Word of God is that it's inspired. 2 Timothy 3.16 says that every word in the book of Scripture is God-breathed. That it's inspired, but it's also unfailing. Isaiah 55, 11 says that God's word will not return void. Get in his word. Listen up. Jot it down. Not only is it inspired or unfailing, but it's never ending. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that, that the mountains will be removed before a single jot or tittle of my word will pass away. That God wrote a book and he wrote some things down because we have a propensity to forget some things. And we have an enemy that's trying to rob us from the faith that God is trying to birth inside of us. So he wrote some things down for us to remember. Let it out. Listen up. Jot it down. Habakkuk goes on in verse 3. And here's what he says. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. You could circle that phrase right there. But at the end it will speak and it will not lie. God cannot lie. Love that. Though it tarries, here it is, wait for it. You could just circle that whole sentence. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, and it will not tarry. Let it out. Listen up. Jot it down. And here's the last thing, and this may be the hardest thing that I'm calling you to, or that the Word of God, rather, is calling you to this morning. And here it is, point number four. Wait for it. We don't like waiting, do we? Like, like some of y'all, maybe you, you got bad internet and it's been buffering right now at your house. And like you are getting on the edge, right? Like we, we as a culture, we do not like waiting. But that's where a lot of us find ourselves right now, isn't it? Again, I think the, the planet is on pause because of this pandemic. But, but there's others of us that are waiting for other things to, to take place, not just the world to reopen, like some of us this morning, man, you're waiting on a child to come back to the faith. And you've prayed countless times, God, would you please just get their attention, grab them by the shirt, God, do, by the shirt collar, God, do whatever it takes. Others of you, you're waiting on a good diagnosis. I just, I just need a breakthrough. I've gone to doctor after doctor, and I'm just so tired. I just need an answer. And others of you, you're waiting for that job. And we are in uncertain times, and you don't know how long you're going to be unemployed, and, and when's the stimulus check coming, and I really need that, and, and maybe some more, and, and we're waiting. And it's difficult in the waiting. Somebody write in the chat right now, I'm waiting. Maybe you need to write, I'm waiting, but I'm trusting Right in the chat, right now, go ahead, type it in there. I'm waiting, but trusting in God. And a lot of us, we've come in here this morning, and we're waiting. And what Habakkuk has to say is, though it tarries, wait for it, because listen, it will surely come. Like he tells us that the vision of God has an appointed time. And listen, 
God never misses an appointment. That his promises are sure. That we're called to wait upon the Lord. Y'all remember a few weeks ago, Pastor Philly preached the, the, the eagle message, is what I call it. And uh, he was doing the, you know, he was cawing and that sort of thing. My kids were loving that. I don't know if you have kids at home, but we were watching church together. And he starts cawing and they start perking up and they start giggling. It was a lot of fun. And, but here's what Pastor Phil told us on what it means to wait for the Lord. He says, waiting for the Lord means that you have prayerful preparation and you have confident expectation. And so when I say wait for it, what I mean is that you have, you are in prayer, God, I'm praying that you would move in this situation. And then you are confident that God will do what he promised he will do. See, here's what you need to know about the promises of God. That you cannot make it happen when it ain't time. And you can't stop it from happening when it is time. Like, like I think about going back to my wife being pregnant. So we had two out of three kids came right around their due date. You know, they, they, the doctors, when you are expecting, they kind of do some math. And I don't know how they figure it out. But like, your baby's going to be due at this date. And, and so they, they pitched out those dates. But my second one, the one that she was pregnant with in that photo earlier, she was a little bit of the wild card. And so my wife, like two weeks before the due date, she, she wakes me up at midnight. It's like, hey, I think I'm going into labor, but I'm not real sure. Go back to sleep and I'll let you know. I'm like, go back to sleep, bro. I can't go back to sleep. And then I start thinking, oh my goodness, we're not even ready for this child. You know, we've got another child. And, and I mean, all these things start running through my mind. And, and, I, and sure enough, it was time. And, and if you've never had kids, here's what you need to know. When it's time, it's time, all right? There's, there's no getting there before it's time, but there's no stopping it before, or there's no stopping it when it is time. You know what I'm saying? And that's a picture of the promises of God, that you can't make it happen when it ain't time. But you can't stop it from happening when it is time. And you cannot induce the promises of God, but you, and you cannot stop them from happening when it's time that God has an appointed time for his promises to come to fruition. That God's timing, listen, God's timing is perfect, and his promises are sure. And promises delayed are not promises denied. We need to wait for it, church. We need to, we need to wait for it. But it's hard, right? Like, like it's hard in the waiting. And I think there, there are times that when we are in this waiting, we grow weary and we, we begin to lose our perspective on the promises of God and all that he's doing. So, so let, me, let me explain it this way. I want you to imagine that th this represents a small thing that could potentially block you from seeing all that God is doing. So, so I got this small thing. I want you to imagine that, that this small thing begins to get in the way of you seeing all that God's doing. So right now, all you can see is that blurry cell phone, right? And, and I think that this is even an appropriate image. You know, you got this blurry cell phone right in front of the camera, and a lot of you, you've allowed your cell phone to block you from being able to see all that God is doing. You on Snapchat, TikTok, Fox News, and CNN, and insta instability is what it is. And you've allowed something small to block you from seeing all that God is doing. And you can't lose perspective on the promises of God in the midst of the waiting. And, and listen, I'm not trying to make light of your affliction. I'm not trying to make light of all that's going on in our world right now. But when you compare all that's going on to all that God is doing, well, let me just tell you, the Apostle Paul, he, he would say this, about all of his suffering, about all of his affliction, and if you don't know much about Paul, our guy was, I mean, he, he was beheaded, all right? He, 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 before that, he was shipwrecked, bit by snakes, people threw rocks at him until they thought he was dead. Brother went through some things, all right? And he surveys all of his suffering, and here's what he says, all of my affliction is but light and momentary compared to the eternal weight of glory that is being stored up for me in Christ. That we've got to have the Pauline perspective in the midst of our waiting and know that God is doing something. Listen, you, you got to know this. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is meaningless right now. Your prom may have been canceled. You may have criticism. You may have cancer, but listen, God is doing something in the midst of all of that. 
You, you may have a diagnosis. There may be a death on the horizon. But nothing is wasted when it's been trusted over to the Lord. And God is at work. No pandemic, no problem, no suffering goes unnoticed. Wait for it, church. Wait for it. Let it out. Listen up. Jot it down. And then wait for it. That's where Habakkuk is. That's what he's doing. He's, he's, he's preparing to hear from God, and God begins to tell him, hey, hey, don't, don't, don't worry, Habakkuk. I haven't forgot about the Babylonians. The Babylonians, they got it coming. And so he goes on in the rest of chapter 2, and, and, and Habakkuk receives this word from the Lord on behalf of the Babylonians, and, and God gives these five woes of, of things that he has against the Babylonians of what he's going to do. Again, promises delayed are not promises denied, and justice delayed is not justice denied. And so God tells Habakkuk that he's going to get the Babylonians. But what we know is that it did not happen in Habakkuk's time. Like Habakkuk, he receives this word from the Lord, and then some 70 years later, after Habakkuk is long gone, it comes true. But just because it doesn't happen immediately doesn't make it not true. And sometimes God is wanting to do something in the waiting that he can only do in the waiting. Like, like God will allow a promise to be put out there and then he will allow a gestation period in which he is growing something internally inside of you. Just, just like pregnancy, going back to that image, that there's a baby to come, there's a promise. But he's growing something inside of that womb in the meantime. And he's teaching some things and forming some things and shaping some things. And this is a picture of what it means to wait. Habakkuk, he gives maybe the most important verse of the whole letter here in chapter 2, verse 4, and here's what he says. He says, Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him. This is against the Babylonians. He said, I'm going to take them down. You be sure of that, Habakkuk. He says, But the just shall live by his faith. We're called to live by our faith, church. We're called to be people who activate this muscle called faith. What Pastor Phil says is that faith is believing it is so, even when it isn't so, because God said it would be so. That, that waiting may be the greatest expression of our faith in these times, and being faithful to the promises of God. So we let it out, and we lament, because that's biblical. We complain to God, but then we listen up, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and then we jot it down because Satan feasts on the faith of the faithful and he wants to rob that seed from you that God is speaking to you this morning and then we wait for it to come. Listen, there's not a promise. There's not a word in the Bible that's not ours if we are children of God. That in, our, in the depths of our tribulation, God's promises will comfort us. In the midst of waves of despair, God's promises will bring us cheer. When, so, when sorrows surround us, it's God's promises that will help us. When pandemics are in our planet, it's God's promises that will bring us peace. That God's presence always rides on the waves of his promises. Wait for it, church. Wait for it. The righteous, they live by faith in the promises of God. And I'm telling you this morning, you've got to wait for it, to not grow weary in your waiting. Don't get disgruntled and wander away from God. We've got to have faith, not sight. Wait for it. That when you're wondering, God, what are you doing? Don't begin to wander into sin and justify why you can give in to that thing. But you continue to remain faithful, even in the questions you wait for at church. That our faith is not based in what we see or what we want or getting our desired outcome. Our faith is based on the character and the goodness and the nature of God. Wait for it. That the thing is that God has given us to hold on to in the gap between believe and receive are his promises. Wait for it, church. Somebody write in the chat, I'm waiting. Wait for it. And allow God to be faithful and true. 
to what he has done and what he is doing in this time. I think some of us maybe listen to this this morning, like it, it's hard to wait on a promise that's been made by God that you really don't even know. And you think about your relationship with God and, and, and it's kind of vague, it's foggy to you. And it's hard to claim the promises of a God that you, you don't even really have a relationship with. And the gospel tells us that God sent his son Jesus, that all of these promises that take place in the Old Testament they come to pass in Christ. What it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says this, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. That what we see is that everything that's taken place in the Old Testament, that, that God has promised that he would, he would send forth a son and that he would be the prince of peace and a wonderful counselor, that, that we rebelled against God in the garden and God didn't see it fit to leave us in our rebellion, but he sent Jesus on this rescue mission and it was been promised or prophesied all throughout the Old Testament. And we see that when Jesus steps onto the pages of human history, that he answers those promises with a resounding yes. And here's what that means. That Christ wants a relationship with you. Like, like I think some of us are listening to this right now. Like in deep down inside, we don't know if God sees us. We don't know if he loves us. But listen, God demonstrated his own love for us in this. That, that while we were against God, not even concerned with God, he allowed a pandemic to take place to get our attention so that we would listen to this message and we would understand that he demonstrated his love by laying down his life. See, the gospel tells us that on Friday when Jesus was crucified, he paid the debt with a credit card that only he carried. And then on Sunday when he rose from the grave, he paid off the credit card statement, y'all. So that everyone that's listening to this right now, if you don't know Jesus, you can cry out to him and he will save you. I wonder if you want to do that this morning. It's as simple as you just bowing your head right now and repeating this prayer after me. The prayer doesn't save you, but it's just a moment in time. You can go ahead and bow your head wherever you are. That God has this message coming to you in the most intimate place in your life, your home, because he wants a relationship with you. If you want to start a relationship with Jesus for the first time, you can just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've rebelled against you and I've not even had interest in you, but I'm listening now, God. And I confess that I, I need you in my life. God, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross, to raise from the grave. And I want to follow you as my Savior and my Lord. Please save me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have you just prayed that prayer? We would love to connect with you. You could just respond in the chat room right now. Just say, hey, me and Jesus, we're in a right relationship now. Others of you, maybe you have questions about that. You could respond in the chat room as well. Just say, hey, I've got some questions. And, or maybe you could even just text this number that's going to pop up right below me. You just text respond or text I, I have questions, whatever, to this number, and someone will reach out to you so that we can help process things with you. But here's what we're about to do, man. We're about to sing this song. And this song, it's rooted in this Psalm 130 that talks about waiting upon the Lord. And I want everyone just to crank the sound up. And I want you to listen to this song, and here's what it says. I will wait for you. On your word, I will rely. I will wait for you till my soul is satisfied. And may this song be an anthem in the middle of our waiting. Turn it up and sing along.
How could I come before your throne? If all forgiveness meets my gaze, I stand redeemed by grace alone. What a great service today. What a great word from Pastor Chad. And what a great song to end with. You know, that song comes from Psalm 130. Uh, and, and one of the lines in Psalm 130 says this. It says, I wait for the Lord, and, and in His word do I hope. And that's what we are doing this, this morning. We're waiting on the Lord, and, and, and we're, we're desiring His word 
to make an impact in our life and to change us. And I know that maybe some of you this morning, maybe a few of you, have recognized that, that you have this deep need for, for a Savior. And, and, and God has been drawing you to Himself this morning. And, and you want to make that decision to step over from darkness to life. And that's just a profession of you saying, man, I'm a sinner. I, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. The Bible says that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, and it just takes one to make us imperfect and all of us are sinners. But it's the beauty and the goodness of God that comes along and says, I've sent a Savior for you and His name is Jesus. And when you profess faith in Jesus and you renounce your sin and you say, God, I give all that I am to you, God does something in that moment. And if you've made that profession of faith this morning, I want to invite you to let us know that. And you can text the word DECISION to the number on your screen and somebody will follow up with you and help you with your next steps. You can also go to livingproof.co slash next steps and share that with us as well. It does make a difference in your life that I, I don't think uh, you can quite comprehend yet what the goodness of God does in our lives. Hey, I want to invite you to share this again. You know, maybe you've, someone's been brought to your mind this morning that does need to know who Jesus is and how much he loves them. Just share this with them. Let them, let them watch for themselves and, and, and we'll just pray that the Lord uses this to speak to, the, to them. Hey, be the church this week. Be the light of the gospel to a hurting world. Be, be the type of people that lift up the brokenhearted, that come alongside the weary, that feed the hungry. You know, a lot of people are hurting right now, but I really firmly believe in a God who is the hope of all mankind. In the church, you, me, are the ones that bring the gospel to the world. So let's do that together this week and see people find hope. In Jesus. Thank you for joining us, church. We are so glad you're here today. Have a great week, and we'll see you back here soon.